How's it going everybody? Today I want to do a video to uh, go a little bit more in depth on how to dismantle a Philco Magic Touch keyboard. Uh, this one right here is an, it's a Magic Touch 1. I'm not sure what the huge, if there are any differences uh, between this and the 2. I have a 2, but I just haven't taken it apart yet. But alright, this is a stock um, keyboard. I do have different keycaps. These are Red Alert, Faxon, whatever you want to call them, keycaps. And alright. First, you're gonna to want to flip it around. Um, I'm making this video mainly because there's not there's a couple videos out there and there's guides, but they're not too detailed. So you're gonna flip it around. There's gonna be a sticker here unless um, somebody's been into it before. But you're gonna to want to break the sticker. In this case, it's already broken. Unscrew. Sorry, you, I don't have my screwdrivers. I got these wonky ones here. Um, you unscrew that. Well, you make sure to unscrew it all the way. In fact, got that guy. Set him aside. And what you're going to notice is now, well you could do it before, but now you can actually take your fingernail and run it in between the bottom and the top here. Um, I'm going to use a razor blade. You don't have to use a razor blade. You could probably get away with using a credit card. It's a bit thick. Um, it might work. And I'm, I'm only using the back side. I'm not using the blade. I'm not actually cutting the, uh, the tabs that hold it in. This is a bit awkward because I'm kind of around the camera. But as you can see, kind of... Lifting it up here, um, usually start with this side. That one's popped out, that one's popped out. There we go. And the last one, there are four in total on this side. And don't, don't push it all the way up, just let it sit about this high. That will show you why. Alright, around here on the front, you have the exact same thing. I don't think you'll be able to use a credit card here. And if you don't want to scratch anything, I, I'd use razor blades. Um, just make sure not to cut yourself. You do the same thing. You get under there. Very awkward at this angle. In there. Four tabs as well. Uh, run along the back side. The tabs you can probably cut them next off. Two them off now. I'm just going to go up these like this. Three and four. All right. Now what we do, we just pull right up. Set that aside. And as you'll see here, these are um, just reference, these are MX Reds. Um, right here, you'll see there are two screws, one here and one here. There and there, there are two Phillipses, Phillips screws. Unscrew those. Almost. All right, now at this point, go to apply some light pressure, hold it to the back. You're going to pull the back off. Make sure you pop this little cord out. It's got a little channel there for it to be held. You don't want it to yank on the cord there. Set that aside. And right here, this is, you got to be gentle with this piece. Um, I watched a video a long time ago when I first got into keyboards, and I thought to myself, you don't need to be all delicate with this. I ripped it off. Um, I completely broke it. This quick fire rapid here completely messed it up until I had to learned to solder and fix it a long time ago. Okay, um, we see these two little channels here. A screwdriver would be better. I'm just going to use the back side of the blade. Just work it out. Take your time, because it sucks and you have to resolder it back in. There you go. You're out. Um, well, let's go around here. Your controller here, your LEDs. Um, this video is pretty much for someone who Let's say you guys had a spill and you've got a sticky key and maybe you're or a couple sticky keys and you're not planning on modding your whole keyboard because I think if you're modding your old key your whole keyboard you might already know what you're doing. But let's see here. I've desoldered a couple switches. Um, I'll make a separate video for desoldering someday. There's a few out there as well. There's little notches you push up. This is after you desoldered, of course. There's two pins in the bottom, and the switch comes right out. This is a plate mounted keyboard. Um, there's PCB mounted, which would be a lot easier. And after you've got these out, you can clean them and such, um, or replace them with new switches or different color switches if you're looking to mod the whole thing. Um, you can go a step further. There are some screws in the back here. There's one, two, three, and four here that does not have a washer and spacer. Um, that's only if you're pulling every switch off the keyboard and planning on doing some major modding. But besides that, the controller itself comes out fairly easy, just apply, lift up equally on both sides, it's a little bit of a pain, 
because I've got the keycaps on. Gotta be kind of gentle. There we go. That's off. You can set that aside if you maybe you fried that out and you need a new one, but I'm assuming at that point you might need a new keyboard. And yeah, that's about it. Um, I can't think of much else to talk about. Um, reassembling it is the same thing in reverse, obviously. And I'm going to be doing another video. Um, since this, I know this is a very popular keyboard, but more people, I think, have this here. Well, this one's modded, but um, they have the Quickfire Rapid from Cooler Master or the Quickfire Stealth or uh, whatnot. And yeah, I'm going to make a video for that as well, so that'll cover that. Um, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, uh, like the video, and if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments, and I'll get to that when I can. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys later.